Latin America is a melting pot of cultures, rich in history and diversity. Among its many cultural threads, the influence of African heritage stands out, weaving a story of resilience, creativity, and transformation. Welcome to Community Connections. I'm your host, Mershai Sahalu. In this episode, I'll take you on a journey with me to explore the Afro-Latino culture and its profound links with Africa through the insights and stories of those who have embraced the culture. Our journey begins with understanding the historical context. I spoke with Dr. Macy Bakari Walton at Howard University, whose studies and research focused on Afro-Venezuelan and Afro-Colombian traditions, survivals, and identity. You have the transit of people from Africa to the Americas. So people always will bring who they are with them. And when you have Africans going to the Americas, they weren't able to bring material things, but they brought their knowledge with them. So knowing all of that, I wanted to learn about how these elements were carried into the Americas since um, it's not taught in schools generally. Afro-diasporic cultures in Latin America use cultural practices as powerful symbols of identity and tools for survival. They have a very specific way of celebrating whatever their celebration is, whether it be a religious or a cultural celebration. Religions like Cadomble, Santeria, and other Afro-Latino religions are used to connect with their ancestors through rituals, offerings, and ceremonies that honor spirits. In terms of survival to kind of mentally connect a connection to their identity. Afro-Latin American countries share many cultural similarities rooted in African heritage. And that is because, one, people wanted to try to emulate what they had at home if we're talking about um, different parts of the African continent. For example, if we're talking about Colombia, they, in the Pacific Coast, they have the marimba, which is, they call the piano of the jungle. based on the balafon, which is played in West Africa, which is, which is using gourds, and in Colombia they're using bamboo. But they're used, they have the same instrument. Kind of the same keys, but you have something different that's underneath. The mix of African cultures of Latin America has also produced many unique forms of language. Africans have their cultural words um, that are going to become infused into the, the main language or the dominant European language. Like the Palenquero in Colombia, the Garifuna in the coastal regions of Central America, and Creole, which is spoken in many different places in different forms. One, two, three. New love, new home, my day shine. Even with the rain, you came at perfect time to burn my Music is one of the most profound legacies of African culture in Latin America. Enjoy your life. I met with Colombian singer Maria Liliana Robeson of La Lila Music, who commonly goes by Lily, to learn more about her music and how she incorporates elements of her culture in it. Actually, I started um, as a hobby because um, my dad is a tango singer and I grew up in that artistic environment. I realized later on that all the artists and music that, that influenced me was black people. 
key Afro-Latino musicians like Celia Cruz, who brought Afro-Cuban music to global prominence with her powerful voice and salsa hits. And contemporary artists like Afro-Colombian singer Toto La Mumposina, who has preserved and popularized traditional cumbia and other Afro-Colombian rhythms, have been instrumental in shaping and popularizing Afro-Latino music across the world. Lily was deeply inspired by these legends, and especially the queen of salsa, Celia Cruz. So when I started in 2016 to sing everything from Celia Cruz that I actually wanted to do, that it has influence from Africa because it comes from um, religious culture that is called La Santeria. Afro-Latino music plays a vital role in religious and spiritual practices. For example, the use of bata drums in Santeria ceremonies honors orishas while the rhythmic dances of Cadomble serve as a form of communication with the spiritual world. In Cuba, that Santeria comes from a god called uh, Chango, and in Africa, they're the same uh, god called Chango with C-H in Cuba is S-H. African percussion music has profoundly influenced Latin American rhythms, incorporating instruments like the conga, bongo, marimba, and tambora, which are essential to genres such as salsa, merengue, and cumbia. The percussion is what Really, I love percussion and I play that. Then my DNA has a lot of African. Everything that is, has to do with something African is, I love it. Afro-Latino music has had a global impact. Reggaeton artists like Danny Yankee and Bad Bunny have topped global charts bringing Afro-Latino rhythms to audiences worldwide. And they're mixing a lot of stuff, so I love to see how people are creating more music and new things, new rhythms, based on, it's all based on African music. With music comes dance. <laughs> which is another area where African influence is unmistakable. Afro-Latino dance forms, such as samba, rumba, and many others, emerge from the fusion of African rhythms. afro music is an uplifting dance that celebrates festivity, freedom, happiness, and joy. Angela Gonzalez has dedicated her life to showcasing that fusion through her business, Afrofusion Dance and Mindfulness. Afrofusion, there are two different cultures, obviously, but with the same roots. Basically, uh, it's afro peruvian music, what we call festejo, means festivity. So you, you know, you're, you're dancing, you're, you're celebrating. And then we have bomba from Puerto Rico. And one, and two. When I met with Angela, she graciously taught me. And turn to your left. A move or two, sharing the rhythm and spirit of her heritage. There you go, you look to the right, to the left, to the right. Afro-Peruvian music is distinguished by its unique rhythms, brought to life through instruments like the cajon, The cajon actually represents the boxes that it was used in the ships when our brothers and sisters were slaves. Papacamote con ají. Papacamote con ají. Cajita. The cajita represents the boxes that they utilize in the Catholic churches as collecting money. The cajita. And we had a is a donkey jaw. So you see it has all the teeth, so it was a lot of part of that animal that they utilized. 
In 2019, Angela traveled to Louisa in Puerto Rico with her daughter. Known as El Pueblo de la Casica, the city of Louisa has become the hub for African-inspired traditions. It is home to black Puerto Rican music. And that's what I learned bomba, and I fell in love with the drumming sound, with the sound of the beach, dancing in barefoot, and connecting with our ancestors to music and dance. And salute, we go up front. To the Bomba, a traditional Puerto Rican dance and music genre, originated in the 1500s during the Spanish colonial period. Enslaved Africans and their descendants who worked on sugar plantations along the coast of Puerto Rico Develop bomba as a way to express themselves, share secret messages, and create community. Comparing to our history, our brothers and sisters didn't have that opportunity to dance or to, you know, do what I do right now. Which I know is part of, it was part of their dream. And doing that through movements and dancing not only shows the heritage, but it's also bringing healing to other people in this generation. Angela keeps her heritage alive not only through her dance, but also through what she wears. This head wrap or African head wrap is called turbante. The turbanti is such an important piece for our Afro-culture heritage because it symbolizes many things. A part of collecting seeds, so you will collect a seed from the ground and you put it on your head. So when it was time for our brothers and sisters to escape the plantation, they can utilize those seeds as a food and resources. <laughs> Angela continues to educate the next generation, one class and performance at a time. There you go. And turn around with that. That I'm the vessel to share something that my brothers and sisters couldn't. And then you say bye as I respect to the drummers. So how, that's how you then now you learn how to dance bomba. Okay, let's go, Jinga. Brazo him, brazo. Slow. Bridge. Martial arts are another testament to the African legacy. Three. I caught up with Roberto Tapia, also known as Contramestre Hakim, at his studio Roda Movements. Let's go. To learn more about the African roots of the most popular martial arts practiced in the Afro Latino community, Capoeira. All right. So, Capoeira is an African Brazilian martial art mixed with dance, acrobatics, and music. The name Capoeira is believed to derive from the South American Indian language Tupi-Guarani word Capoeira, which refers to areas of low vegetation or secondary forest where enslaved Africans would practice the martial art in secret as a form of resistance and self-defense. All these uh, uh, tribes they used to observe a lot the animals of the Amazon rainforest, which is jaguars, bats, snakes, you know, uh, birds. And they imitated this kind of game or attack. It is also important to know that although much of what we know about capoeira today originated from Angola, it wasn't the only source. Other African countries like Benin, Congo, Mozambique, and other parts of West and Central Africa also contributed to its development. The instruments used in capoeira also play a crucial role in setting the rhythm and guiding the movement of the martial art. First uh, is the call the bell, or agogo. The second, uh, which is the drum. Atabaki. We have the beating bow. And then we have a tambourine. And the other we call reco reco. So for a capoeira event, 
you have to have the instruments playing. <laughs> Roberto's Capoeira classes cater to a wide range of students, from three-year-olds to adults. Capoeira helps also the kids to develop self-esteem. You have to pass this way. There! Discipline. Go! Go! Okay! Now. Work as a team. Two! You cannot do it alone. You need somebody in front of you. You need a team to develop capoeira. Emphasizing community building that strengthens social bonds. Just keep training, keep working. Capoeira is a long journey, you know, has a beginning, but doesn't have an end. And create a sense. sense of belonging. Right, just... Movement! Yeah! Woo! Serving as a powerful expression of heritage, food plays a central role in the Afro-Latino culture. Juan Pablo David, a proud member of the Garifuna tribe in Honduras, is deeply committed to preserving his rich cultural heritage through food and works to ensure its legacy is passed down to future generations. A culture being in Honduras for 250 years. Uh, we came originally from Africa, from Nigeria. You know, we've been keeping it for 250 years, so we want to keep it for more years. The Garifunas are a unique Afro-Indigenous people who originated from the intermingling of West African, Carib, and Arawak populations primarily residing along the Caribbean coasts of Central America, with a rich cultural heritage that includes their own language, music, and traditions. Chef Juan Pablo made us all bundiga. It smells so good. During our visit. The bundiga dish holds a significant cultural role in Afro-Honduran Garifuna communities. And this is the product that we're going to use, culantro. It also reflects African culinary practices. Pepper, garlic, and we got jam and cassava. Using starchy vegetables like green bananas combined with the coastal ingredients of the Caribbean, such as coconut milk and seafood. So, I fixed the shrimp. Well, because we're from the Caribbean, so we live next to the, to the okay. ocean. So we get a lot of, a lot of seafood, like, you know, we get a lot of fish and a lot of shrimp from, that's pretty much the kind of meal that we get. This is a, a grape. We use it to grate the banana. So this is a special stone they use. It's a lot of work to make it. Bundiga arose from the Garifuna people's historical displacement and migration throughout Central America. And that goes on the soup now? Yeah. Oh, that's some soap. Where they adapted their West African roots to their new tropical environment. Smells so good. Creating a dish that symbolizes resilience. Oh, we're going to add the shrimp, that's the final step. And cultural preservation. Zero lunch, for lunch. Okay. It's not for breakfast, it's not for dinner. It was to hold you down for the rest of the day. No cholesterol. No cholesterol. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to keep the food tradition is very important. In, in Central America, a lot of people go to our community, especially for the food. So we're going to enjoy the finished product. It tastes amazing. It came out good, huh? Whether through languages, religion, dance, music, or food, the African presence is deeply woven into Afro-Latino culture. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of the enduring African legacy in Latin America. For County Cable, I'm Mershai Sahalu. Thanks for watching.